Good evening. I'm Dick Jones. I'm the 2022 president of the American College of Dentists. One of the missions of the college is to enhance leadership. And one of our important initiatives is to enhance our sections because they're the operational arm of our most important endeavors. It's pretty well known that the Ontario section has consistently been one of the strongest sections in the college. Having been their regent for four years and conversing with their current regent, Terry Norris, it's clear that much of their success is due to leadership. But what's the secret of their leadership success? And can it be replicated in other sections? We've asked some of the Ontario section leaders to share their experience tonight. And I'd like to begin by asking the participants to introduce themselves, indicate their current and past positions in their tenure of service to the sections in any capacity, not necessarily elected. But I wanna start with Regent Terry Norris. I am uh, Terry Norris. I'm the current Regent for Regency Four, as President Jones has said. I am in my third year as Regent, so I have one and a half years left, you know, and it's been my distinct pleasure to work with so many good people. Uh, Dick Jones laid a, a tremendous amount of groundwork <clears throat> and all I had to do was come and continue what he started. But in uh, becoming regent and getting to know the individuals, not only in Ontario, but in the other sections, you know, I've, I've come, come to appreciate where these sections come from, where they're going, how they do what they do, they're not all alike. Uh, they have strengths, they have weaknesses, uh, but the camaraderie that I see in Ontario in their meetings and uh, at the national uh, meeting is just fantastic. I mean, they come in full force. There's an excitement there and uh, they're, they're not content just to go with the status quo. They want to do better uh, than the year before. They have a great uh, sense of fostering leadership. And uh, when they have a change of administration, they don't miss a lick. So uh, it's my pleasure to work with Ontario. And as President Jones has said uh, in years past, uh, Ontario is like Kentucky on steroids. Uh, the down home, demeanor, the friendliness, the camaraderie reminds me so much of my own section that it's a delight to, uh, to talk with individuals from Ontario and to go to their meetings. So uh, I love what you're doing, keep it up. I am here to help and any way that I can, you know how to get a hold of me and uh, it's my pleasure. Well, I'll start with a question for uh, well, actually, I want to continue with the introductions. Uh, so, Sunita, we'll start with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dick. Uh, and thank you, Terry, for uh, inviting us. Um, my name is uh, Sunita Joshi, and this is my third year with, uh, with the ACD. I was brought on um, as the SPIA liaison with the University of Toronto, and uh, Last year, I uh, did the same, but this year, uh, currently, I'm the secretary, and I'm also the SPIA liaison, and uh, been helping out with the newsletter, and I think I just got nominated to be, uh, to look at our website as well. So, like, we, like everybody else on, uh, on ACD Ontario, we wear many hats, and it's my pleasure to be part of this involvement. Thank you. Brenda? Thank you also for the introduction and thanks for the opportunity to be speaking with everyone. Um, my name is Brenda Thompson and I've been part of the executive uh, for at least five years. So I have learned a lot thanks to having had the opportunity to follow the line from being secretary to chair to past chair. 
And then um, thanks to Sonia Sluuda, who helped vet me and train me uh, as a co-editor of our newsletter. I'm now the newsletter editor with a great committee of, of help, helping me with that newsletter. It's almost finished. Um, as well as now we're, we've created another committee that's going to be our membership uh, committee to help us uh, do our best to retain our good fellows and be uh, aware of uh, what's value for our fellows. And um, I think that uh, being part and part of all these committees really helps us get to know what our fellows are looking for and what they truly need in from the college. Thank you. Thank you. Sonia? Hi, um, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to speak to everyone. And um, I was actually brought on by Brenda probably four years ago, five years ago, it's, it's, it's blending. And um, I'm uh, currently the vice chair. So, um, and as well as I'm wearing a few other hats, um, I'm the continuing education um, committee um, chair, which we've, it's a new committee that we started this year. I've been the sponsorship chair for probably two years. And prior to that, I was the newsletter editor for probably three years, maybe four, I'm not sure. And, um, but like Sunita and uh, Brenda say, uh, we're on a lot of committees and we tend to interact between committees, but it, um, it uh, gives us an opportunity to see what everybody else is doing. Thank you. And saving the best for last, Bonnie. Hi, I think you're saving the oldest person on the executive for last. Anyway, thank you very much, Dick and Terry. I'm Bonnie Chandler. I am the, I'm a past chair of uh, the Ontario division and I've stayed on um, as treasurer. So I think I've been on the executive for about seven or eight years. As I say, I'm the oldest one, not the oldest, but the long standing on the executive. Um, so, uh, as well as being treasurer, I, uh, as Sonia said, we're quite fluid. We, um, we help each other out all the time. Um, our committees overlap quite a bit. And uh, with Sonia's new um, continuing education committee, which I can see will be very busy when she takes on her presidency in November, um, that there'll be some help required. Thank you. Uh, Bonnie, broadly speaking, what would you say the age range is of the active, current active participants? You mean on the executive? Not, not just the elected officials, but people that are actually actively serving the Ontario section, doing committee work or whatever. Um... I would, Sunita, I don't know how old you are, but I think you're the youngest. 39? Something like that. So I would say, I'm guessing everybody help me out here. I'm saying the average age might be about 55, 60. Sunita, In the top, of course, being top age? 59. In the top age, the oldest? Um, I think... Paul, in the 70s? Paul, yes, Paul's in his 70s. I think he might be 73. Anybody know? Well, th that's good. Um, about how many people would you say are actually actively involved doing committee work? Maybe not chairing a committee, but participating and contributing? Uh, I would say about nine of us. And what do you suppose um, the ranges of is of years of active participation? I would say five, probably five years. Well, I think you've been active for oh. at least se seven, I think. Yes, I have. Didn't you say average? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I said range. Range. So yes, I would say one year to probably seven years. 
And is Drew still active, Drew Smith? Uh, no, Drew stepped down. Um, in the he must have been active for at least eight years. Oh, or, or more. Yes. Or more. Well, Bonnie, Barry, if you me... have any questions, you jump in. Yeah, let me ask you a question, uh, Bonnie, and this is to the whole group. Uh, how do you find prospective leaders to take places of people rotating off? For example, Drew's been active for quite some time and now he's rotated off. How do you identify people that can come in and work their way up? Well, I can answer that. I think by and large, we look at the organizations um, and we look at people that we've served with in other organizations and committees and stuff. And uh, what we do is we, if we think they're going to be a good fit, um, we um, ask them if they would be interested. And if they would be interested, we say no commitments yet. We have to, you have to give us your resume. And then we run the resume past the, uh, the executive. Mm -hmm. So that's one way in which we do it. Do you have a list of uh, people you're looking at uh, who could be ready to uh, come into the rotation, come into the executive? Well, I think that's going to be part of the membership committee or nominations and awards. I'm not sure which committee, but uh, we're trying to get a more, uh, Ontario is a big province. So we're trying to identify people in each section. So it's not all Toronto centric. So, and from there, people uh, will say, well, you know, does anybody know anything about this person? Are they any, on any committees, that sort of thing? And uh, if I can just jump in, I, as Sonia said, one of the things is that we've all been um, with organized dentistry for quite a long time. And, you know, through that, we've made contacts with other people on other executives. And, uh, you know, we know who we've worked with, we know who who is sort of involved, and will get get sort of uh, get get involved in committees and do the work, as opposed to somebody who's just going to sit on the sidelines. And uh, you know, we actively go out and sort of ask our colleagues if they're interested. Like Sonia and Brenda and myself are meeting up with uh, an, an individual next week who I'd work. Uh, we've all three of us have worked with at a, at another. Uh, executive and sort of invited them to say, come, you know, let, let's talk about this and let's, let, let's introduce you to the ACD. So these are people we know that are going to do the work, who are not just going to sit on the sidelines. So uh, I think that's one of the things we, we select <clears throat> uh, leaders. Well, it almost sounds like even once you've uh, identified somebody that you think is going to be good, it sounds like you have a mentorship process going on. Brenda described how uh, Sonia mentored her to be editor. Yes, and actually, um, when you have a mentorship program, it really helps for the person being mentored to build their confidence in the position that they're holding. And, um, you know, the way Sonia was so great about mentoring me as the newsletter editor, um, we have the opportunity, uh, the newsletter committee has an opportunity to mentor a new uh, person moving forward that's going to eventually assume the position as newsletter editor, so that we're not dropping somebody into a position where they're like, you know, it might take way demanding too much of their volunteer time. If we help them, we, you know, give them uh, names and lists and every detail that we can we allow them to eventually take over that position and be successful. And that's what we want, um, to have uh, somebody in a position that's successful. Thank you. It, it's interesting that you, your leaders hang around because in some sections I see them uh, barely make it through their three or four year responsibility and then they head for the hills. And if I can just make a comment about that because I was really thinking about it, why have I been around so long? And it's 
first of all, Sonia, Sunita, and I were great friends from another organization. So we are friends. Uh, and we were friends before we started together with ACD. But since joining the ACD on the line, I had the opportunity to work and be mentored also by Bonnie Chandler. And so then Bonnie and I became friends. The same with Wayne and Paul. So we've all had an opportunity to become friends by working together. So it's not just that we're volunteers doing some work that we feel we must. We've also become very good friends. So it's a good working relationship, but on a very, very friendly basis. So I've known your section for seven years, I believe, since 2015. And there's been some fantastic leaders, some of whom you've lost. There's one in, your, in particular that I've always felt was like the godfather of your whole section, Jack McClister. Can somebody talk about Jack McClister and how he brought people in and mentored people? Well, I can certainly say a few words, Dick. Thank you very much. Uh, Jack was a very close friend of mine and uh, for decades, of course, and being practicing in London together. And we taught together at uh, the university for decades as well. So Jack was always an advocate for organized dentistry. And uh, along the way, he would just say to me, I, here's something I think you would like to do. You know, as a matter of fact, I think you would really like to do this. Give this a thought. And there were committees on the ODA and uh, there were, uh, you know, being a counselor with the ODA. And, and of course, uh, along the way, uh, I'm pretty sure that he nominated me for ACD. And once I was became a fellow, then he directed me to come to the meeting, the annual general meeting. And uh, of course I knew a lot of people and uh, so he got me interested and then moving uh, towards coming on to the executive. So he was, he was really um, a great person to facilitate uh, the movement of, of people by getting them to um, understand an organization and see whether they, if uh, and they might fit somewhere. And, but he was always so positive in his leadership and uh, so convincing. So he, he did target people, I know that. There's, there's other people in other positions that he did target and uh, uh, he got moving along. For example, uh, Brock Nicolucci is basically, he calls Jack his his uncle, I think he's his godfather actually. And Jack moved him right along and now he is uh, president elect of the Ontario Dental Association. So his, <laughs> his influence is still being strongly felt everywhere. And Brock is an ACD fellow, of course. So when it goes to Jack's involvement, he didn't just uh, do a job and then, and then walk away, as you say, Dick. He, he went on to do great things with SPIA at Western. And he really uh, supported that group and got them moving. He attended every function. Uh, you know, the last function he attended was just before he passed and before COVID would not allow in-person meetings. And I took him and uh, he was sick, but he went and he stayed. So an extraordinary man. And uh, we benefit and, and we are still gonna benefit uh, for years to come because of his deep down uh, you know, influence and reaching into uh, you know, talking with people. And it's gonna come right along for the next five years, this, the SPIA graduates, because he, uh, he was integral part of uh, their understanding of organized dentistry and ACD. And uh, so I think, uh, what else can I say? Good friend, he's gone too soon. Paul, when we talk about leadership in Ontario, uh, and this is for, for all of the executive, 
give us uh, a little idea of the of how your executive is made up, how often you communicate, what you communicate about uh, to keep Ontario running. Well, there's a there's a lot in the answer to that question. Uh, we certainly have a strong executive where everybody is participating uh, and they're focusing on one area or the other, but everybody helps. So I think uh, when we talk about our education committee, we have Sonia taking that on and she has uh, three or four board people or executive people on the committee. And the same thing with newsletter, there's a collaboration there and it's moving on now to uh, uh, you know, incorporate another person to mentor for, for next year. So uh, we're meeting once a month. We have an agenda and we hit the highlights. And um, you know, I basically try as chair this year to create an agenda that's going to be a working document, but I also ask for input to make sure that everybody's ideas are, are brought forward. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes things come up and I get an email uh, the night before or the week before and say, this is important. Do you think we can put this in? And of course we managed to do that. Uh, I've been trying to keep the meetings to an hour, an hour and a half, and, it, and it's working. You can get a lot established. And I think the reason we can be so efficient is that a lot of our work and a lot of our questions we ask each other beforehand in a, an email here and an email there and things get sorted out. So there, there is a, uh, you know, a great building of ideas and reference material and making a decision after that uh, becomes fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, it isn't, our board meetings aren't strictly working on agenda items that we haven't talked about before. We're coming in with a good knowledge base and we're coming in with a good understanding of how people feel and their ideas. And it makes it so much uh, clearer and so much better. So uh, people are, are very attentive to supporting uh, between meetings and because uh, there's so many details. And when the details are hammered out, uh, the meetings flow easier and decisions come easier. I find it uh, interesting that uh, you meet once a month. Uh, I don't know of any other sections that communicate that frequently. And apparently for Ontario, it's led to uh, the, your success and the leadership that you maintain. So uh, your monthly meetings are very fruitful. They are indeed. They are indeed, and uh, they're very enjoyable. I, we have fun meetings, so that's that's the other thing. We are basically good friends. We haven't met in person for you know a dog's age, but uh, we are good friends, and uh, we respect each other. And meeting once a month for a short meeting is actually a highlight uh, to do that, and uh, it. We do have a, a yearly agenda and we, we're moving on things, but actually right now we're expanding uh, because we're looking at so much more with uh, educational webinars and, and different offerings to our uh, membership and uh, to the Regency. We have the one coming up on February 24th with Dr. Ola Plotska. And uh, I think these are going to be really showcasing uh, ACD through the Ontario section with uh, what the educational offerings we are going to have. And I think you're going to be quite delighted. The educational committee has just been gung ho. Uh, we have started with zero and now we have a list as long as your arm of speakers and speakers that have consented to speak and we're sliding into time frames. It's just amazing what can be done. Uh, the newsletter always comes together. That's a lot of hard work. Um, and of course, just working on AGM nominations, there's, there's a lot of things that, uh, that you have to do year round. 
And uh, it's easier than all of a sudden being behind the eight ball. The agenda flows. Paul, well, I'm curious. Uh, there are sections that have maybe three officers and no committees. But this evening, I've heard uh, each one of you has talked about this committee or that committee. Could you kind of tick off uh, by memory the committees that you have? Well, we have a nominating committee. Uh, Larry Pulver is the chair. Sonia Slavuta is the chair of uh, education. Uh, we have Brenda is uh, in with the uh, editor of the newsletter and she is looking at uh, taking on a membership portfolio because we think that is uh, such a critical part of, uh, of our organization. I don't know if I missed anything there. What else we got going? <laughs> we're, we're also going to be working on a website committee, like just to keep maintain our website in order to keep it up to date and relevant to our fellows. Yeah, so don't look at it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. We also uh, have a sponsorship committee. <laughs> and I wanted to just say too that, you know, our executive meetings can be uh, more are streamlined because we do a lot of the committee work at the committee level now. So that a lot of, we hash out a lot of the committee work uh, with a smaller group. And then um, Paul asked us to forward a report. So then the committee chair would, would uh, present their report on whatever, whether it's the newsletter, sponsorship, and it keeps everything uh, hopping on our executive meeting. I think that the reports also uh, give us an opportunity to, um, um, to make sure we're all on the same page. No one's going rogue. And uh, so even though at the committee, we're very familiar with what we're doing uh, by, bringing it, uh, by bringing our reports before we ever have a meeting, uh, everybody's had a chance to read the report, think about what's said, but also so that we're all mentally marching forward. I can see you have a great team right now, but that doesn't completely explain to me how it is that you had a great team seven years ago or 15 years ago. Is there a structure or a spirit that's added to your consistency? Um, I can speak to that. When we, when I was on the executive way back, we had Jack McClister, we had Drew, um, we had some wonderful people on the executive. And I find that over the years, it just keeps getting better. Um, more cohesive, um, more, more people are workers and, um, and they think ahead as to what could happen, uh, what would happen and how we can improve our chapter. So I think it started off where maybe we had, I remember when Brian Chapnick um, asked me to come on the line and I was accepted. Um, I think we, we only had maybe four or five meetings a year and then it became each presidency had included some additional things. And, uh, and that's, I think, how we got here. It just kept growing and snowballing in a very positive way. Bonnie, you were chair four years ago, I think. I believe so. And I've seen a lot of sections where the chair hung around for uh, about two months and then they took off for the hills when they were done. So why are you hanging on? Well, I think because they, they needed the treasurer um, and uh, they wanted the treasurer to, to have at least a three-year term. Um, so I am, uh, Paul, can I say it? Sure. I'm, I'm stepping down at the end of 
uh, this at, at the AGM, I, I feel we need to give uh, some fresh blood for sure. But I've truly enjoyed uh, being on this executive. I've made some wonderful friends that I can see will be lifelong friends. And um, I just think it's the most uh, wonderful uh, experience. There's some things this evening that stick out to me. You have frequent meetings. It seems to me that by having um, a meeting more often, it doesn't have to be as long or as intensive and you end up getting more things done. You have lots of committees and you have a very large board, lots of leadership involved. And I think that translates to distributing responsibilities in less burnout. I see some sections where one or two people seem to do all the work and they just, they get burned out and they leave as soon as they can. And I also see a, a history of long service, even though, well, Bonnie's a good example. Um, often we see a pattern of somebody serves as secretary treasurer for two or three years, then they earn the right to, to move up and become chair. Uh, Bonnie's done the reverse. Uh, she served her time and she could have left, but she stayed on and took on what I think is the, one of the less desirable jobs. But I applaud you. Um, does anybody else have any comments about? Yeah, yeah, Dick, we're still looking for the money. <laughs> you mean this is a paid performance? No, no, from, from the treasurer. You know, this, she's oh. had it for three years, but we're still looking for it. Well, you shouldn't let her leave. <laughs> no, we don't plan to. We're going to put her on a committee somewhere, and she has to mentor the next person. Well, she's too good to let go. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Dick, uh, one of the things I think you realize and I've said is the American College of Dentists is probably one of the best kept secrets in dentistry. Um, has Ontario been able to make a presence within the ODA? Uh, do, uh, your, does your typical Ontario dentist know what the American College of Dentists does or is? And are, do you have a footprint in the ODA annual meeting? I can actually speak to that. I, I don't know that everybody knows who we are and at present. However, we're addressing that for next year uh, by really having almost every month, other than the summer months when everybody's at the cottage golfing, um, having continuing education and uh, we've had for several years sponsor a speaker who speaks either on ethics or um, a professionalism um, at the, uh, it's, a, it's called the Winter Clinic, but it's a, it's a large uh, meeting. And um, uh, the ODA uh, to this point hasn't um, asked us, but um, one of our goals as the continuing education program is to get um, an ethics um, uh, person speaking where we're, we're going to sponsor an ethics person at the uh, ASM, although they that won't happen for at least three years because they actually book three years in advance. So from my perspective, if we want to get our foot point out that we're really trying to do that through continuing education. And um, I think it, it makes all the dentists sit up and going, wait a minute, I know what you guys are doing. Yeah. I think the other uh, avenue, uh, Dick, is the fact that we have two extremely uh, strong and uh, active SPIA organizations. And the students, uh, are active within uh, their schools uh, and the people that know what they're doing know that it's associated with the American College. Uh, they certainly have a broad range of their own continuing education functions. And, uh, you know, they 
uh, have people on faculty that uh, that know of them that are ACD fellows. Uh, for example, Dean Haas is an ACT uh, member, and Bertha Garcia, director at uh, Schulich Dentistry, is uh, an honorary member as of last year. So, uh, throughout sprinkled throughout the faculties, and certainly a heavy number of our uh, members are. ODA executive uh, members. So uh, we, we still have to light that fire as Sonia was saying, we have to get on uh, the list and, and be advertised a bit better as promoting with organizations our continuing education. I think that is gonna bring more light, but certainly through white coat ceremonies uh, and, and such, uh, the word is out, but we could do better. And I think we still will. We all have missed, I think, an important answer to many of the questions that have been discussed tonight. Um, unlike many of our organizations, which are transactional, the American College of Den Dentists is a mission-based organization, which focuses all of us on the same point. We're all here for the same reason. And we all derive energy from working towards enhancing excellence, leadership, ethics, and professionalism. Well, much due to the genuine dedication and collegiality that uh, you have, you've all become my good friends over the years. You've inspired us tonight. I wanna thank you for your outstanding contributions in the past tonight and in the future. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much, Dick. I appreciate the invitation and all of us here at Ontario section uh, surely thought this was uh, a real privilege to be invited. <laughs>